Let's bring him in now. They host the Outsiders podcast. It's outstanding. I've been on it multiple times. Bryn Griffiths is on the top screen. Robin Brownlee's on the bottom screen. Two Edmonton media legends, Alberta media legends, and Bryn spent some time here in this province. How's it going, gents? Great, thank you. Outstanding, Rob. All right. Robin, you act like you're mad at me with all my takes lately on CFL and XFL. Are you mad at me? Or what is your take on the last five weeks since we've last spoken? (laughs) <laughs> I'm not mad at you, Rod. I get, I get all the consternation. Um, you know, do something, guys. Um, you know, you can't be away for another season. You talked about it before the break. Uh, you, you don't know if you're going to survive missing one season for sure. So let's get it on if you're going to get it on. But limbo is no place to be because it's out of sight out of mind. Yeah, but I think your thing was when I said just the NFL Canada idea, you tweeted full stop. And I don't think you're really down on the XFL issue either. I think you want to save the Canadian brand of football. I just don't think that's possible. Am I right on that, Robin? You probably are. Uh, you know, you hang on to traditions, uh, you know, that you're used to, I guess, as as long as you can, hoping things won't change. But the the reality is um, it has to change. So uh, for me, I don't mind the idea of some change if there's no other option. I just don't want it to be an empty shell of what it once was. Bryn, I'm not even going to ask you a question because I know your brain is a bubbling cauldron of thoughts right now. So just (laughs) spill your guts with what – Yeah, go ahead. Well, you know, there's a couple of things here. One is I think you've got to break this into age demographics. I think if you are over the age of 45, our opinions really don't matter as much to save this league. If you're under 45 and you want to save this league and you're prepared to do anything to do it, then I I get that and I, I understand that and I respect it. But I also believe that there's a demographic that, that for the longest time – the Canadian Football League ignored, and now it's to the point where that's the only demographic that's going to save this thing. And right now, I think the 25 to 40-year-old group is the group that is going to have to make the hard decision to save this thing. I'm prepared to, uh, to buy into a merger if it's going to mean that there's going to be quality football played in all of the nine centers across this country. And if it's a four down football, I can live with that. I, I even have a bit of an issue now after talking to a 26-year-old who has lived in our house for quite some time. And the issue is that they want to see the best players play. They don't care about quotas. They really don't care about a Canadian playing. And that is if they can find the best NCAA player that is not playing in the National Football League, and he will play kind of a hybrid of our rules and their rules, playing in our field, they're prepared to go with that. So I I'm really confused because I have the passion for this league. I grew up watching in Clark Stadium and the Knothole Gang for years and years and years, watching horrible teams in the 60s and then getting better in the 70s. So my history goes way, way back. But for a lot of them in the demographic that matter the most now, this league has completely disappeared off their radar screen. And if they go another season without having football, it's going to completely go away. Yeah, and uh, yeah, new and exciting. That's where I'm look. I'm looking ahead, not behind. Don Mitchell's a Navy friend of ours. He's watching in Bahrain today. He says us over forty fivers are living to seventy and eighty years of age. So don't just take us out beyond the barn just yet. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Don. We don't matter anymore. Yeah. We will watch the game. We will enjoy the games, and I love it. But the matter of the fact is, is that. We would probably prefer to watch on our big screen at home, and we're the only people buying big screen TVs now, by the way. Uh, The under 40 demographic are going to be probably watching whatever the league is. They're going to be watching on this thing. So, uh, so yeah, it, we're, we, we matter because we like to watch the games. But if we're not, we're not paying the money to go and watch at Mosaic Stadium or Commonwealth Stadium or wherever, that's the demo they've got to get in because this is always going to be a ticket driven league if you're not buying the jerseys if you're not buying to pay buying a seat to watch the game being played then really we're just passive viewers and that's all we are you need the demographic that's going to plunk the money down so i'm not dismissive of us but we are not the demographic that matters now and we're not the demographic that's going to save this league 
Brent, I'm going to come back on the XFL merger talk in a moment, but I want to involve Robin again. Robin, as I mentioned, you're in the city of champions there now. The Oilers are, what, third in the Scotia North Division, maybe Stanley Cup contenders. Does this talk even rate on your radar with the people that you run with and chat with every day? What, talk about the XFL merger with the CFL? Is that what you're talking about? And the state of the CFL right now with poised to announce the delay of the start of the season. With the Oilers in any kind of playoff drive, let's be honest, uh, and no traditional uh, CFL camp uh, on the horizon, no. I don't think there's a whole lot of thought being given uh, to the CFL XFL merger. This is a hockey town first and foremost. Better to say an Oiler town first and foremost. And after that game last night, which was a, a real barn burner, um, there's a lot of chatter today. Uh, people are looking ahead. They're looking at Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl, and now a dark horse in the do we have a hope sweepstakes in goaltender Mike Smith of all people um I tell you what there's a lot of buzz right now the Oilers are going to make the playoffs that's always a big deal here the question is if they finish second or third and it's going to be them in Winnipeg I don't think Montreal's catching them and I'm not sure they've got enough gas to catch the Toronto Maple Leafs so it's playoff drive baby all the way right now yeah, and I'm going to come back on that with both of you uh, on the order talk. But Bryn, I was talking to a guy in the CFL the other day, and he goes, watch out for Bryn. He knows something. He was the first guy to say that at least one team doesn't want to play, and the XFL might not want all nine CFL teams. Do you have anything to add to what you know of where this is going and actually where it's at as we sit here today? Well, it's funny. The toughest thing I've probably had to do in a long time was sit on that one. I just, uh, I was not in a position where I could say very much. But I've, it's gone a little quiet here in the last, uh, I would say, three weeks. Although on our podcast, and I know on your show, we got almost three weeks out of that story. And that, for a CFL story, is amazing. Traditionally for us, anything we've talked about in the CFL, we've seen our, our podcast numbers drop off a little bit, but not on this story because I think people are starting to recognize that it's getting a little more serious. And to think of another year without CFL football to me is a, is a horrific thought, but there's really not a lot that I'm hearing now. And I sometimes I often feel when the information tap gets turned off a little bit, there's usually more going on behind the scenes than you'll really imagine. I'd like to think that there's some talk uh, be- between the two. I- I've become more pro-merger over the last few months than anything because I think it's the only way the league's going to make it. I'd like to see the CFL get a few things uh, you know, that, that matter to them in terms of rules, and-, and the ratio would be nice, I guess. Uh, but as I said, not for no- the younger demographic don't seem to care. At least that's what I'm hearing. But, uh, but for the most part, I- I'm not surprised – uh, by who the team was that stepped up and said, you know, we might be more interested in that league than this league. You know, uh, the team in Toronto are trying to do anything they can to make themselves, you know, uh, I, I guess the talked about entity, whether or not they're, they're certainly not the flagship state uh, flagship uh, franchise in the Canadian football league anymore, but they still wield a ton of power. And as long as TSN is centered in Toronto, when the Argonauts talk a little bit, it does catch some attention. They, the one thing that I hear that is a continual uh, roadblock right now is that is that they have to make sure the guarantee right now is getting all of the cities in Canada to play as part of a merger. That's the only thing I've been hearing the last few weeks, Rod, is that that's still not a, a true given. And, uh, I, you know, everybody's got different sources, but, but uh, for me, it's gone a little cold in the last few weeks, and I think that that might be a good thing. Okay, well, let me just lastly say this on this, Brent. I've got 60-40 to the no that the CFL doesn't play this year. What's your percentage breakdown from what you know? I would say 70-30 no. I, I'm not very optimistic right now. And, and, hey, listen, I worked in public relations at the NHL level, so I've seen behind that curtain a little bit. And I was always a true believer that you need to – you need to keep ahead of stories. And the CFL for me has been very old time in the way it's done things for years and years, decades. And one of the things that is a big mistake for me right now is not addressing issues as they come up. 
and that and therefore you've disconnected your fan base the fan base really wants to know what's going on right now i uh, i i just think they're making a horrible error by not saying very much so I'm getting a little more negative about a season rolling. I would have liked to have seen the season roll like it normally would. But, the, you know, if, if they're talking about pushing back to, let's say, September, and it's going to be a shortened schedule, it's going to go right up against the NFL. And I don't, I don't choose between football leagues. I love football. I watch both. But I think that you're going to get lost if you uh, push it back to the month of September. So I'm a little more negative, a little more pessimistic. I've become a little more pessimistic about everything the Canadian Football League has done recently because they're just keeping everybody in the dark too much. In my and Rob, Robin, we'll finish on you. You kind of got me uh, excited with the orders talk there. They're my Canadian team. The Golden Knights are my American team. Um, you mentioned the win over Montreal last night, 4-1. I was watching the Golden Knights and the Patty Marlowe thing. Actually, forget about the orders. I want your th- take on this, Robin, as an Edmonton guy. Should the NHL and... WHA merged their stats. That's our poll question today. Well, that's interesting. Um, Mr. Hockey spent a little bit of time in in uh, the WHA, as you know, um, you know, which skews his numbers. Uh, good question. You know, I was when I thought we might be talking about Patty Marlowe today. I was looking around him at the guys. Um, in the league, you know, games wise and scoring wise, and another name, not that it's the WHA, but uh, Yaramir Yager took some time off as well, and uh, he's right up there uh, in the scoring race. So I don't know why you wouldn't. Um, is it a step down? Sure, it was. Is you know, does Gary Bettman want some separation from that or some of the old time governors? Probably because these were the upstarts who caused them uh, lots of trouble and uh, inflated salaries with the money they were throwing around back then. But at this point, um, I mean, I don't think it's a huge deal, but I don't have a problem if they did it. Yeah, interesting. I I don't think they should. All our polls today, Facebook and Twitter saying no, they should not. But how far do you think, Robin, the orders can go in these Stanley Cup playoffs? <laughs> Oh, there's a grenade. Wow. Um, <laughs> thanks for that one. Um, I, I tell you what, which Oilers? Um, you know, the the uh, we've seen different teams show up this year. I'll tell you what, the team that got uh, ignited last night when things got rough, when Connor McDavid got run, when uh, Steve Chase on or, or uh, Chase on ran into. Uh, the Habs yes. goaltender not yeah I mean it's it's uh, that was intense that was playoff hockey when they're engaged uh, they can play with anybody and and to me what we saw to Connor McDavid was a big screw you after he got re- run uh, by Deneau and when Connor McDavid sets his mind to doing something how many people are really going to stop him? Leon Dreisaitl was engaged there too. He uh, he took a swipe at somebody who'd taken a run, uh, got a high sticking penalty. Um, I tell you what, and I mentioned him earlier, if Mike Smith is the good Mike Smith, the 920 plus uh, save percentage goaltender we're seeing, and that surprises the hell out of me because I thought he was done. I thought he was finished. I wrote it last year. Uh, not the first time I've been dead wrong. But if you get that kind of goaltending, you know, it's an old formula. There's nothing There's nothing new about it. You get that kind of goaltending and you get two of the best players on the planet uh, out to prove something and out to lead the way. All you need is some players who are willing to, and capable of following. And right now, the Oilers have a lot of guys who can do that. So, you know, I think they're, I don't know how deep they're going to go, Rod. It's always tricky. I like them against Winnipeg if that's a if that's a matchup. I Love like it. them, <laughs> you know, and, and hey, the road to the Stanley Cup for the Oilers used to lead through Winnipeg one way or another. Uh, there were some great battles with Calgary, of course, but you look how many times the Oilers and the Jets met uh, the Jets usually came out second best in that. So, you know, yep. I'm looking forward to them getting revved up uh, in that opening round. Waffling, I know, but 
I looked at that play-in series last year, Rod, and I thought, uh, you know, they'll beat the Blackhawks in three. Well, they weren't even in it. So they weren't even in it. (laughs) Exactly. Uh, We're out of time. Brian, in 30 seconds, uh, where can they watch you guys' stuff? Well, uh, we're we basically an audio podcast because most people seem to like to listen to us in the car, and who'd want to look at this anyway, right? So, uh, so, so we're we're doing the audio thing, but you you can hear us on all of the ear candy sites, uh, that, that type of thing. You know, Apple Apple Podcast is still the most listened to uh, way people are catching us. But all you have to do is uh, is follow us on Apple or on Google or any of the regular sites, and and you can get to us. And also the other thing too, we're getting more and more responses off of our Twitter account, which is at Outsiders Twenty Twenty. And also now, uh, the, the vid- the, we don't have the video other than our screen, but the audio we have uh, also now up on YouTube as well. So I think it's only a matter of time before we actually put through put people through the agony of getting a chance to see us as well. So it's coming, but it's really been enjoyable. It's been a lot of fun. Thanks, guys. I'm a big fan of you both, as you know. Stay well. Talk soon. Thanks, Thanks Roddy. Roddy. We'll be right back with a sports update. Curling Report and more. You're watching the RP Show on Game Plus TV, YouTube and Facebook Live, and 24-hour sports talk at rodpeterson.com. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.